So given your experience living and working in both China and Germany, what advice would you give to those interested students、um, who would like to pursue a career in, or an international career in economics? My suggestion would be trying different alternatives. Just take myself as an example.、Um, before I got the opportunity to work in Europe,、uh, my career path is very simple. I just want to stay in Beijing until I have the opportunity. And then it opens the door to a new world, and realize well, working in、uh, in Europe is also a great experience. So my tip would be try different possibilities. You never know what's gonna to happen, and maybe there will be some big surprise ahead of you. So just try. It. Well, Professor Li, thank you very much for taking the time today.、Um, I see you've brought some wonderful postcards, which we'll talk about more later. But、mm -hmm. without further ado, I'd like to start by talking about your academic background. Okay. So you come from a country with close to 1.5 billion people, and you've done all your education and academics in China so far. So why Mannheim? First, Mannheim has a very good econ program. And we are able to attract many brilliant students. It's a great experience to teach brilliant and smart students and interact with them. The second thing is about the research environment here.、Uh, the faculties are great economists. I learn from both senior and junior colleagues alike, and from them, I get a lot of positive knowledge spill over. So now, just a bit more about your background academically.、Um, so you completed both degrees in mathematics and finance, and then you immediately pursued your PhD. So this is an opportunity that exists for students in Mannheim as well, high achieving students. So I was wondering, what did you enjoy the most about immediately pursuing your PhD? Well, I think efficiency, because it saves time. Uh, if you do an internship in between, then、um, you will get older <laughs> naturally <laughs> after graduation. But of course, there is also a caveat.、Mm -hmm. That means I、uh, lose the opportunity to try different alternatives. So there is always a trade-off. So you studied at Tsinghua University, which is one of the top universities worldwide.、Uh, the University of Mannheim is lucky to have a partnership. With Tsinghua University, so my question is, what makes、um, an exchange there such a unique study opportunity? Well, I think the first thing is that、um, you get exposed to the most brilliant Chinese students,、um, because China,、uh, Tsinghua is a top university, so a lot of brilliant students、uh, come to Tsinghua to study, and usually we know that you learn more from your peers. Than from your teachers, so it will be great to get exposed to the、uh, brilliant Chinese students. Second thing is about、uh, Tsinghua is a comprehensive university, so you get exposed to students from other disciplines would be a which would be a very nice experience. Another thing is that、um, Tsinghua is located in Beijing. This is a city of great history, so you got the opportunity to explore the cultural relics、uh, in Beijing, and of course, Tsinghua is located in China. China is such a large and beautiful country, so it would be great if you take the opportunity to take a tour in China. And because for our students,、um, they are future leaders in Germany, in Europe,、um, so. It would be great for them to get to know more about the Chinese culture, with the、uh, rising global influence of China. And that's something in my personal experience that I've always tried to do. So I was born in the United States, but then grew up in Panama City, Panama, in Latin America for a few years, and now I'm in Germany. So I'm always trying to build bridges across cultures because. I think that's an invaluable experience that you can have nowadays, having that cultural understanding 
between cultures, um, which will be an important part of the future, I imagine. Definitely. So at Tsinghua University, you had a concentration in mathematics. Students here in Mannheim have the same opportunity, so they can pursue a degree in economics with a concentration in mathematics. So uh, why does this combination interest you? So if you want to pursue a PhD degree in economics, uh, it's important to take several math courses so you are better equipped um, with the knowledge you need and you can have a really smooth transition uh, in your PhD program. So now that we know a bit about your academic background, I'd like to transition to your research. Um, and one of the main focuses of your research is the U.S.-China trade war and tariffs. So say, if I'm a big firm ordering a big shoe shipment from China, what impact would a tariff have on this shipment? If you're a U.S. firm and uh, during the trade war, you will experience a rise in import tariff, which would increase uh, your cost. That means uh, your profit margin uh, will be greatly reduced if the retail price remains to be unchanged. So what I'm understanding is that tariffs make our lives more expensive. So if this is the case, why are they always regularly employed? Because the government cares about employment as well. So the, for the government, they not only care about uh, the consumer's welf uh, welfare, for example, cheaper price, but also they care about uh, employment. Suppose that there are also a shoe factory in the U.S., uh, which face competition from China. Higher tariff will protect the local factory and to guarantee that um, the people, our uh, worker there, will not be unemployed. In one of your research pieces, um, you talked about how the U.S.-China trade war, the tariffs from that, often then just go to a third country, so say, Mexico or Thailand. So would you like to talk about that a bit? Yeah, so what I learned from my research is that um, sometimes trade policies may fail to achieve its goal. For example, the first thing is about trade diversion, which you just mentioned. Suppose if there is a third country, think about Mexico. Uh, during the US-China trade war, China could export more to Mexico and then after simple assembling uh, works, Mexico can export the products to the U.S. So this is a leeway. And if we have the trade diversion, the U.S. trade policy will be less effective than the government sought. Ultimately, the question is then, would the U.S. consumer be harmed by these tariffs that the U.S. was initially imposing to protect its consumers? Yeah, we can think about it from um, several ways. The first is that what I learned from my research is that nearly all the Trump tariffs were paid by the U.S. importing firms. It's not by the Chinese exporters. So in this sense, higher tariff actually reduce the U.S. firm's profit, which means in the long run, it will affect workers employed in these firms. And secondly, in the short run, those firms didn't pass on the tariff to the consumers, which means the retailer price remained to be unchanged. However, we don't know what would be happening in the long run. A very likely thing is that the firm in the long run would further pass the additional tariff to consumers, which means consumers would pay higher price to buy the same things. So you can see consumers are affected in two ways. First, as workers employed in those in, uh, importing firms, um, their salary or employment status may be negatively affected. Second, in the long run, they're going to pay higher price to buy goods. So this is the second thing. So ultimately, the consumer is harmed then. And then my question would be now, what spillover effects would um, a third country in this trade war, say, example, Germany, 
Um, what would the results be in Germany as a result of the U.S.-China trade war? Um, so far, according to the data, Germany is not um, that largely affected by the trade war. So there are winners of the trade war. For example, countries that are either close um, to China or to the U.S. For example, Southeastern Asian countries like Vietnam or um, Mexico, they benefit from the trade war because of the trade diversion we just talked about. And how would this play out in one of the big topics nowadays, the electronic vehicles industry? Uh, that's a fascinating question. For the EV industry, uh, the EU has started the anti-dumping investigation um, towards the Chinese EV cars. And according to my research, um, if EU raise the tariff, um, probably uh, it may not be able to achieve its original goal because the Chinese EV car producers can simply build up more factories in uh, Eastern Europe countries. And by doing so, um, those cars will face zero tariff. Um, another thing is that the employment will shift from Germany to Eastern European countries. So what I think is that if we think about trade diversion, um, we may reconsider how effective the trade policies uh, really would are. be. So now I'd like to transition um, a bit back to um, Tsinghua University. If I were interested in spending a semester abroad there, what branches of economics are especially strong in China? So the courses that I recommend uh, the first one is international trade because um, China is, a, is an export-oriented country. So there is uh, a lot of trade columnists in China and Tsinghua also has a strong trade team. Apart from that, I would recommend to take the course Labor Economics because over the past decades, there has been several reforms in China's labor market so it'll be really nice to take course on labor economics. The postcards that you've brought today, do those have any relation to it at all? Yes. So I bought two sets of postcards. This is a postcard of Tsinghua University, where I got my PhD uh, degree. This is a postcard for Xiamen University. And Mannheim also has a close collaboration with Xiamen University. And uh, so if you are a student in Mannheim, then you will have the opportunity to visit uh, the universities in China. It will be a fascinating experience. So given your experience living and working in both China and Germany, what advice would you give to those interested students um, who would like to pursue a career in or an international career in economics? My suggestion would be trying different alternatives. Just take myself as an example. Um, before I got the opportunity to work in Europe, uh, my career path is very simple. I just want to stay in Beijing until I have the opportunity. And then it opens the door to a new world and realize, well, working in, uh, in Europe is also a great experience. So my tip would be try different possibilities. You never know what's going to happen. And maybe there will be some big surprise ahead of you. So just try it. And say what I can touch on from that is that I have many international friends here in Mannheim studying with me. And that's something that I valued very much that intercultural international collaboration, which I'm sure is the case for you as well learning from different people with different backgrounds and having your opinion about that as well, but seeing how their experiences can shape your experience uh, as well. Exactly. So that would be it more or less. Thank you very much for taking the time today. I uh, truly enjoyed it. Thank you.